Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, guess what I'm doing today? I'm recording the brushes video. Are you guys not so proud of me? I said I would get it up by the end of April, and it is April 29th. So, procrastination? What? I've never even heard of that. I'm gonna put two disclaimers at the beginning of this video. The first is a little more lighthearted. Just prepare yourself because you're about to see some of the worst taken care of brushes in the history of art. I tend to use very, very cheap brushes because I don't take care of my brushes and I know I don't take care of my brushes. Plus, I actually like cheap brushes better. So I'm sorry in advance if this makes you cringe. Mom, I know you're watching this. I'm sorry. The second disclaimer that I want to talk about is this video will be talking about cruelty-free, animal cruelty type stuff. I'm not really going to go into it, but there are natural and synthetic um, brushes. I'll go into it later, but um, that is something that's going to be talked about in this video. So I just, I don't want to cause any drama on the comments or anything like that. So, um, you know, everything's up to your personal preference. Just respect what other people's personal preferences are. Do your research and I'll try to share as much um, non-biased information as I possibly can with you guys. So, okay. So that said, Let's move on to brushes. Okay, so this is a brush. Yay! I'm going to start with basic brush anatomy. So this is going to be obviously your handle made out of, you know, usually wood or plastic. And then this is called a ferrule or ferrule. I don't know. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. And it's basically like this metal part and it clamps onto the handle and it clamps onto the bristles and the bristles, it's like what holds the bristles in place. And then here you have the bristles or the head, basic anatomy, handle, ferrule, head. Okay, so I'm going to go through the general properties of the each brush has and kind of explain a little bit about them. I'm also going to tell you the types of brushes that I usually use and that I like. And I'm going to give you a little bit about brush care. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the various types of brushes. This is like brush shapes basically. The first brush type that we talk about is the one that I use almost exclusively and it's called a round brush. Um, that's basically what the brush I showed you before was. My other one has fallen on the floor. So this is a round brush. It's pretty simple, self-explanatory. It is round. Um, they can have a pointed tip, like these two, or they can have a flat tip, like this one does. Or, well, it's not flat, but it's more rounded, if that makes sense. And it's gonna have a round ferrule. I think they are great for pretty much everything. They're good for detail. You can lay in washes. You can do all kinds of stuff. And they're pretty much all I ever use when I'm doing watercolor painting. The next type of brushes, there's actually three, and they're all really, really similar. So I'm gonna talk about them all at once. These are the flat brushes, essentially, and I'm grouping that all into one category. Now, flat itself is a category, and these are going to be flat brushes. So, a flat brush is going to have, obviously the ferrule will be round, but then at the end it's going to flatten out. They're going to be thin, and they're going to be elongated in comparison to the width of it. It's quite long, so that's a flat brush. A flat brush is also going to have a flat edge to it. I very rarely use flat brushes when I am watercolor painting. They can be useful for creating hard edges and for laying in washes. That said, I do use almost exclusively flat brushes in my oil painting, so I am going to be showing some oil painting brushes in the next uh, shape. And I'm also going to be showing a makeup brush because, like I said, most of my watercolor brushes are round brushes, so I kind of had to get a little creative. So going off of a flat, you have a bright, and a bright is essentially a flat, but shorter, and I love brights. Brights are my second favorite brush after rounds. They are what I use in oil paints. They're like them more than flats. I feel like you get really good control, and they're great for just laying paint down, you know, like, like it. So this is where the um, badly taken care of brushes come into account. My oil paint brushes, I just, they, this was one of the good ones. The other ones look like sticks. Those are brights, and then the last one that I have to talk about in this category is the filbert. And I do not have any examples of this brush, I just have this. It's a makeup brush, and basically a filbert is what you're used to seeing as a general eyeshadow brush. It's a flat brush, it's got a flat ferrule, but the top is going to be rounded, it's going to be domed instead of flat. So that's a filbert brush. So those are kind of your two basic brushes. That so you've got your round brushes and then your flat brushes. And those are the types of brushes that you're going to use for the majority of your painting or your picture. And then after that you get into specialty brushes. The first kind of specialty brush is going to be a fan brush. I only have one of these because I very rarely use them, but I know a lot of people do use them in watercolor. Basically, it's going to have, again, a flat ferrule. The ferrule is going to be shaped a little bit differently on the end. It's kind of shaped round, like in a round shape. 
and that is what's going to help it stay in this fanned out shape even when you wash it. These are usually quite thin and they're very good for blending or adding in texture. I know a lot of people like to use them to do trees like pine trees back and forth or grass. It can also be used very effectively with dry brush technique um, which is where you don't have a lot of water um, on your brush you just mostly have paint. So that is a fan. Uh, the next brush is going to be an angular brush. Again I don't use these in watercolor painting, I do use them in oil painting however, so I have two brushes, um, they look like this. This is again similar to a flat brush, it's got a flat ferrule, but it's got an angled edge. These are quite destroyed, I'm so sorry. And then this is a makeup brush that shows the shape a little bit more clearly. It is essentially an angled eyeliner brush, but they're usually a little bit longer. Um, I like these because you can get really nice detail with the very, very point and tip of it. You can get a nice thin line and then you can turn and use a lot and um, while I don't use the chisel tips on Copic markers that way, um, in a brush I find it's a little bit easier to use and you can get great varied line weights with them. So that's an angled brush. And then you're going to go into your wash brushes. So there's a bunch of different wash brushes. I'm just going to show two. I'm going to show a basic wash brush and a mop brush. Uh, this is one of the brushes that you should have if you're doing watercolor. You look like this. Ooh. So these are all wash brushes. I know there's a bunch of them, but I'm going to just focus on this guy right now. It's taped up. <laughs> um, a wash brush is going to be very, very soft. They're going to be fuller. They do have, this is a flat one, so it's got a flat ferrule, um, flat at end head, and they're usually made out of natural fibers. A wash brush is going to hold a lot of water, and you can really, and they're usually quite big also and fluffy, and they're, and you can really get a big, like a nice even wash with a wash brush. So you should really invest in one of these if you are going to be doing watercolors. They are very, very helpful. It is next to impossible to get a nice um, non-streaky uniform wash with a just a simple round or a flat, even if it's really big. So this is a wash brush. And then a mop brush is going to be a variation on a wash brush. This is just two of them, two smaller ones, um, but I do have larger ones. And again, it's, it's basically a wash brush, but it's going to be round and fluffy. So the last brush that I have to talk about, I do not have an example of, um, but it is a brush called a rigger. It's also called a liner. And basically it is a very thin brush. So it's, it's got the same structure as a round brush, but it is going to be a lot thinner and it is going to be almost twice as long. They're like this long, um, sometimes you know, an inch or more and long, thin, skinny, and they're used primarily for very thin details such as tree branches and grass and all that good stuff. They are actually very, very useful and I really, really need to get myself one. So that is a rigger. So after you have your brush shapes, you're going to have brush sizes. Now brush sizes are very frustrating because they are not standardized at all. There's kind of a standardization, but it's kind of like women's jeans. A four at one store could be like an eight at another store. So it's kind of hard, but a lot of stores do have um, brush like sizing guidelines and that can kind of help get you, give you a general idea. Usually they don't vary too much, but I have twos that are the exact same sizes as my fours and all of that. So that said, there are two types of sizes and there are sizes for round brushes and there are sizes for flat brushes and I basically just go off of the ferrule, like whether the ferrule is round or flat to determine that. Um, so for round brushes, you're going to have the smallest size is going to be, um, I don't actually know how to say this, but it's like four over zero. That's the smallest size and the largest size is 24. And I'm sure maybe there are sizes smaller than that or sizes bigger than that. The flat sizes are a lot easier. There are two different types of sizing generally used for flats. There's 0 through 24, which is kind of similar to the round. And there's also inches. So I have two examples here. This is my bright, and it was labeled as a 4. So Windsor & Newton, this is a Windsor & Newton 4. Boop. Okay. However, I have over here, these are by Princeton Art and Brush Company. And these are flat, kind of like wash brushes or natural hair brushes. And these are labeled by inches. So this is a one inch, this is a half inch, and this is a five eighths inches. So if you can, if you're ordering online and you want flat brushes, I would try to find a place that does the inch measuring system because it's gonna be way easier for you to know what you're actually ordering. So, and it's just, again, width. So this is one inch wide, this is half an inch, or not half an inch, five eighths of an inch. 
all that good stuff. So personally, I'm going to share the sizes that I like to use and use most frequently. Um, if you'd like to use as a jumping off point, you're more than welcome to. So the sizes that I use the most frequently, and I can take one brush with me anywhere, it's going to be a six. Okay, I am a huge fan of a number six brush. They, most of them are generally around the same size. Six is kind of, tends to be more consistent than some of the others. It's where you get into fours and twos and threes. They kind of get uh, similar, but um, a six is fine enough for a small detail. It's big enough that you can lay in colors relatively easily. Um, this is my favorite type of brush is a six round. Love it, love it, love it. However, um, there are a couple other brushes that I use quite frequently. Um, going down one, I like a four, and going up one, I like an eight. This is kind of like my trio of ones that I use quite frequently. I do also like to use a, a larger round. This is a 12, and I tend to, tend to use this when I'm just laying in flat areas and flat colors. Um, the reason I tend to use this over a wash brush is I am very selective with my use of wash brushes. I find that I don't get a lot of control with them, so I will lay in just a base color with the wash where it doesn't need to be neat. But when I need to do a large area that I need to be neat, kind of like when I'm building that up, I'll use a large round. And then for small brushes, I love me my tiny brushes, and I have three um, that I use quite frequently. It's going to be these guys. So this is going to be a zero, this is a five over a zero, and this is a ten over zero. So I'm kind of having it down a step each time. And these three are perfect for just doing plenty of detail, um, getting in hair, everything like that. If I had to choose one of them, I would choose the five, five over zero. But yeah, so this is kind of my basic brush kit. Okay, so you got your shapes, you got your sizes, that all makes sense. The last thing is going to be the bristle fibers. So there are going to be two basic types of bristle fibers. There are going to be natural fibers and synthetic fibers. So you can usually tell a synthetic fiber because it tends to be a lovely bright orange color. Sometimes they're white, sometimes they're kind of a brown. Um, but you'll always be able to tell it over a natural brush because as you can tell, in fact, if I even grab... Okay, this is, this is really a destroyed brush, but <laughs> this is a synthetic, this is a natural, they're the exact same size, and you can tell, even though this is completely destroyed and has paint dried in it, that this brush just puffs out way more. Um, you can tell it's a, it's a natural hair fiber, it's, you know, very, very easy. So there are benefits and disadvantages to both. So first of all, uh, let me start with type. So, Synthetic, most synthetic brushes are going to be either nylon, a synthetic blend, or you can actually get a synthetic sable now, which I haven't tried, but I would like to. For natural brushes, there's a much larger selection. There's going to be camel brushes, which are not made from camel hair. Camel brushes are actually a blend of hair, so it can be like, include squirrel, goat, pony, ox, um, all of that. Um, so that's a camel hair is actually a blend of hair, it's not from a camel. Um, there is the um, ox hair, pony hair, squirrel hair, just individually. And then there is the big one, which is Kalinsky Sable. Kalinsky Sable brushes are generally considered like the best of the best for watercolor brushes. So some of the pros of using a natural hair brush are natural hair has kind of like little scales on it. And those little scales, they're going to help trap water and paint and it makes that um, paintbrush much more absorbent and it makes it hold on to a lot more water which makes them really really great for watercolor painting. Also a natural hairbrush the hair is going to cling together when it gets wet and they tend to have a nice softness but also a good amount of spring to it, well a sable brush does. So for example I've got my thing of water and this is a natural hairbrush and I dip it in there it's going to kind of cling together versus fluffing out like it was before. And then I can really kind of shape that brush when it's wet. I dropped water on myself. I can shape it and I can kind of use it as I want. And you can see how soft it is and how, how much it bends. But this is not a sable brush. I do not know what this is. Um, I don't own sable brushes. I'm too poor for that. Um, versus a synthetic brush is no, cha no change in the shape because it's already quite smooth. And you can see there's a little bit more resistance there when you're painting and it keeps its shape a little bit more when you're pressing down on the paper. So natural hair brushes are going to hold more water. That is just a fact. They will hold more water than synthetic brushes. Synthetic brushes, their cons, they, they don't hold as much water. They're not as soft. 
Um, however, uh, they're going to be less prone to damage and breakage than natural hair brushes simply because it's not natural hair. I mean, your hair breaks all the time, right? Natural hair is going to break under stress. They are also less prone to damage from solvents. And actually, if you are an acrylic painter that's watching this for some reason, you cannot use natural hair brushes. Acrylic must be used with synthetic brushes. Um, it will destroy natural hair brushes. They are also easier to keep clean because they don't have that scale structure. They're going to be a lot easier to get the paint out. Paint won't get trapped in there. And the big one is they are cruelty free. So let's talk about cruelty free brushes. So most of the hair, um, natural hair brushes are going to be byproducts of the food or fur industry. I don't want to say that all of them are and I don't want to say what is a byproduct of what because I honestly don't know. But a lot of them are byproducts. Whether or not you choose to use natural hair brushes or synthetic hair brushes is entirely up to you. It is a personal choice. You can make that decision based off of the feel of the brushes and how effective they are in your painting. I primarily use synthetic brushes because I prefer them. I like the control they give me and I like the springiness that they have um, as compared to the very, very soft flexibility of natural brushes. I find that I have a hard time controlling the watercolor when I use natural hair brushes. However, I know watercolorists that love natural hair brushes. Sable hair is their favorite and they think that, you know, a uh, synthetic cannot beat it. And you know, a synthetic, like I said, it's not gonna absorb as much and it is very frustrating as much as I love the control that it gives me, constantly having to re-dip your paint in the water, your paint doesn't go as far, um, especially if you're using expensive paint, that can be frustrating. There is also something to be said of ethical considerations whether or not you wanna do a natural versus a synthetic brush. So as I said, they're often byproducts of the industry, of other industries. Um, sable hair, which is uh, the Kalinsky sable, is a little bit of a hotly debated topic right now. And it is the most popular, as I said, in watercolor brushes, and it is very expensive. So that is another con in the natural, is they tend to be more expensive than synthetic, obviously. Um, Kalinsky sable is considered the best because it has a lot of strength, it has a lot of spring, and it has extremely great absorbency. Um, it is tailored specifically for watercolors. The Kalinsky Sable is actually the Siberian Weasel and there's a lot of debate over whether they're byproducts of the fur, whether hairbrushes are the byproducts of the fur industry, if they're just pulled from the tail of the male weasel, if this and that, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of um, kind of information floating out there and I don't know all of it. But they are endangered in India and they are not endangered anywhere else in the world. Generally, in most other countries, they're actually considered a pest the way we would consider um, like a gopher or a prairie dog. However, the import on Kalinsky sable in the United States is currently banned. And the reason for that is because they are endangered in the country of India, they need to be able to prove that the hair on that brush was not sourced from India. And there isn't a whole lot of paperwork saying whether it is or isn't. So until that paperwork can get sorted out and brush um, brush companies can start providing proof that, they, that that sable was not taken from India and was in fact taken from a country where um, the Kalinsky sable isn't endangered, then the US has imports temporarily banned on them. They are not banned in any other countries. So if you are outside of the United States, this does not apply to you. So. That is kind of everything to say about the Kalinsky Sable and if that is significant to you, if you think, you know, I don't care, it's endangered in one country, I'm not going to have a brush from an endangered animal, I'm not going to have a brush from an animal at all, that's totally okay. It is your decision, it is your brush, it is a completely personal thing. And I try to do some research, see what hair is byproducts of what industries or if there's any cruelty free natural brushes. I know that you can actually probably buy cruelty free natural hair brushes on Etsy. Um, I bet you can buy like handmade natural bristle brushes. So if natural bristle brushes are something you really want but you're worried about that whole like animal thing, there are options. You know, um, like I said, there's a synthetic sable. Um, I haven't tried it but I've heard it is very, very good. There are options. Um, do your research and figure out what fits best for you. That is all I'm going to say about that. Moving on. <laughs> That's kind of everything you need to know about brushes themselves. The last thing I'm going to talk about is brush care. Don't be me. This is ironic, by the way, that I'm talking about brush care. So, this, your ferrule that's glued on, you do not want to get water in there because what will happen is the bristles will get loose. It'll loosen the glue and then it'll start coming out and then what will happen is it will fall off the handle and then you'll have to take the handle down. It's all kinds of messy. So, first of all, 
when you wash the brushes, you can wash with a couple of different things. There are artist soaps out there. Um, the one that I really like is this guy. It's called the Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver for a wet oil paint, dry oil paint, watercolor, acrylic, and stains. Also, this is bomb if you get paint on your clothes. It's so good. Um, it comes in a tub like this. You can just ah, get it wet and swirl your brush around in it. I prefer this over a liquid cleaner. I think you waste a lot less. I think liquid cleaners, you just waste so much. If you have a synthetic brush, you could probably clean it with dish soap. Um, if you have a natural hairbrush, I've heard that people clean with dish soap and then um, with a mixture of dish soap and olive oil. I don't know. If you have expensive brushes, buy just buy Artist Brush Cleaner. It's like five dollars. Um, if you have cheapo brushes like me, just holla. I clean mine with hand soap half the time. Now, when you wash your brushes, you want to wash with the direction of the ferrule. So, if you have a round ferrule, you can wash in a circle like this. If you have a flat ferrule, you want to go with the direction of that. So this is a flat ferrule, I would go like this, back and forth. That way you're not going to shape, misshape the, br the bristles and change the shape of the brush and have it do weird things, so don't do that. Um, the last thing to know about brush care is you should dry your brushes flat or, if at all possible, facing down. Um, they do sell brush guards, um, they're usually for makeup, but I don't see why they wouldn't work for these brushes, and then you can kind of stick them up. Um, you can create some sort of hanging device or you can be me and just dry them flat. Um, drying flat will allow a little bit of water to get into the ferrule, but it's significantly better than drying them like this, which you never, ever, 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 ever want to do. I don't care how lazy you are. Don't dry your brushes like this. This water is gonna creep down into the ferrule and tomorrow you're gonna go paint your brush and you know what's gonna happen? This is gonna fly off in your water jar when you're rinsing your brush and then you're gonna have to stick your hand in there and water's gonna go everywhere. Basically, your life is gonna be ruined. So, just saying. <laughs> So that is kind of everything about brushes. As far as brush recommendations, like I said, I use cheap brushes. I personally find that I get the, mo the best results out of using good quality paper, good quality watercolors, but my brush quality doesn't make too much of a difference for me. Um, it's entirely personal. As such, I don't have that many recommendations for you because, I mean, these are artist soft brushes from Michaels. It was $4.99 for a pack of like 40 good deal by the way um so what i i have gotten some recommendations from my mom who is a lot more into nicer brushes and i'm going to be posting them down in the comment box below um these are recommendations that she personally likes recommendations that she's seen online that a lot of people are liking i haven't tried them and i can't personally vouch for them but you're welcome to look through them and see you know do some research and see if any of them appeal to you if you want to be like me and you like cheap brushes there's a lot of great options out there. Michaels has their Artist Loft brushes for $4.99. They're bomb. Um, they're synthetic, and I actually really like them. They hold their shape really well. Um, they hold a decent amount of water. Also, these brushes, which are also Artist Loft, and these are acrylic brushes, I really like. I'm weird. I just, I like synthetic brushes, and maybe you will too, so give it a try, pick up some cheap synthetic, pick up some cheap natural, figure out which one works best for you. It's the same as paper. Um, depending on the style that you use to paint is going to depend on the type, size, shape of brushes that you like. But hopefully this gives you a little bit more information so you can be more informed when you're going out to purchase um, brushes. Alright, well thanks so much for watching. The next video that I have coming up in this series is going to be all about, um, it's going to be a little shorter and it's just going to be extra materials that you can use when you're doing your watercolor. So tune in for that. Thank you so much for your patience with this video. I really appreciate it and have a great rest of your day. Bye!